So today I'm at the University of Cambridge to speak with Dr Kat Coops about her recent Biology Letters article about primate material culture. So um, Kat, really nice to, to see you here today. Yes. Um, it would be good if you could start off by giving us um, a bit of background about your research um, and how you became interested in, in this field. Okay, well just to go back to where it all started, actually already as a, as a six-year-old I decided I wanted to study chimpanzees. I asked around what do I need to do, studying biology seemed like a good way to go about it, so I went to study in the Netherlands, then finished my master's there and one of my projects was on uh, captive chimpanzees and in 2003 I started studying wild chimpanzees in Guinea in West Africa. And um, completed my first master's project there and then moved to Cambridge to do my PhD here with um, Professor Bill McGrew on chimpanzee material culture, also focusing on chimpanzees in West Africa and Guinea in the, the Nima Mountains. So you mentioned obviously the chimpanzees that you've been working with. Um, in your article it actually um, is discussing three types of three different primates that are yeah. using material culture, so um, perhaps you could just tell us about how each of those different species uses, uses material culture. Yeah, so first of all to kind of uh, link it to my PhD research. So what I found in my PhD is that if you're looking at how chimpanzees use tools, for in this case in uh, my study site in West Africa, um, I was interested in how does the environment influence whether or not they use tools, when they use tools, mm -hmm. because previous research on um, primate culture, primate material culture, mm -hmm. actually tried to exclude ecological and also, also genetic factors in order to establish that really we have culture in wild animals. Mm -hmm. But then the next step is, okay, we have shown that there is culture, but actually how does the environment influence material culture? Because previously it was excluded, but then you run the risk of not addressing how actually there might be an interaction between environment and culture. So this is... Um, somewhat a conclusion that came out of my PhD work on chimpanzees. So the next step was how th does this also hold in other tool using primates? So that's how we came to collaborate with Carol van Schaik, who is um, a orangutan expert and Elisabetta Wieselbergi who uh, studies tool use in capuchin monkeys to see in those three tool use in taxa does the environment influence their material culture, their tool use each of those species, do they use different types of tools and how do they use them? Yeah, so um, first of all in chimpanzees, not chimpanzees use tools but not every population uses the same types of tools and some use a lot, some use very few, which is one of the things we're interested in explaining. Why, why is this the case? So in, an example in chimpanzees is uh, nut cracking, mm -hmm. so using two stones or um, a root and a stone to crack open nuts. Um, they may use long wands to um, get aggressive army ants from their nest, so they stick it in the nest and then swipe off the ants. They may fish for termites and the orangutans also have some extractive tool uses. They um, use sticks to get insects from tree holes or, or honey, so insect products. Um, they use also little sticks to get seeds from fruits with very uh, spiny hairs, so they use it to extract the seeds. And then thirdly, the capuchin monkeys, they use also uh, stones to crack open nuts. Not all of them do, but the ones living in savanna-like environments do. Mm. And they also have some stick to use to get, uh, for example, little lizards from crevices between the stones, and they also dig sometimes with sticks. Could you tell us um, exactly what is meant by material culture? in this context. Yeah, so the, the term material culture is uh, borrowed from the field of archaeology in which it would mean the things people leave behind. So all the material evidence um, relating to culture both past and present. And us primatologists uh, studying tool use in apes have borrowed this term uh, referring to ape artifacts. So the material culture of a population would be the combination of all the tools they use within that population. And why it's cultural is because chimpanzees are not born nutcrackers. They actually need to become one. They need to learn how to crack nuts. And the fact that tool use is socially learned, and there's now plenty of evidence both in captivity and the wild, that's why we can term tool use as material culture. So this is the combination of all tool use within the population. 
your um, article in Biology Letters is looking at trying to kind of explain why this tool use has, has happened in different yeah. species. So maybe you could just tell us, um, give us a brief summary about your model um, and tell us how the model works um, in, with those species. Yeah. Um, just to quickly explain, we were interested, as I said, how does the environment also influence material culture? And we looked at two aspects. We were interested to see, is it opportunity? If I just bump into lots of stones and nuts, is that gonna m more likely to, to make me a nutcracker? Or is it about necessity? If I just don't have anything to eat, I will in the end end up inventing tool use. Mm -hmm. So those were the two hypotheses, so to speak, that we tested in those three species. And what we found is that ecological opportunity, so um, which means the density of resources that require tool use and tool materials, they seem to explain most of the variation we see. They, they seem to drive the use of tools. Whereas what was initially often proposed, necessity is the mother of invention, actually doesn't seem to hold. So at times, for example, when there's almost no food to eat or you don't see more tool use, and if I look across chimpanzee groups at sites where there is really um, strong seasonality, so um, very severe food scarcity, those populations don't have more types of tool use. So it seems to be that ecological opportunity may be more the mother of invention rather than necessity. We added that to, to the original model, which already suggested that uh, sociality, social organization and intelligence or cognition should be very important uh, influences on tool use. And we now explicitly added the environment, ecological opportunities, as one of those three factor sets uh, driving primate material culture. Um, and you mentioned that um, it's socially learned. What exactly do you mean by, by that? So just to, to stick to the example of chimpanzee nutcracking, um, little chimpanzees, they spend a lot of time with their mother and she will be eating whatever she eats and they observe to see what to eat, what not to eat, and how to eat it. In the case of nutcracking, it, it takes ch young chimpanzees years to actually become competent nutcrackers. Mm -hmm. So for the first couple of years, they, they don't actually manage to get any nuts to eat, but they may get some from their mother. When she's cracking, they are watching, they may get some. And they're, they are very motivated to keep trying to learn how to do this. And um, if you don't grow up in a group where others crack nuts, you will not grow up a gr uh, not to become a nutcracker either. How can this um, kind of knowledge that we're, that we're gaining about, about primate material culture help to inform us on our understanding of our own evolutionary past? That's, that's a really good question. Uh, one of the reasons behind studying chimpanzees and also bonobos is that they are actually our closest living relatives. Since we cannot go back into the past with a time machine, studying them may, may inform us about our own evolution. And one of the factors that has often been proposed to be important in explaining hominin tool use is demography, so population densities. And what we're suggesting is that, yes, that, that ought to be important, so that would be sociality in our model, but also environment is very important. And we are trying to explicitly address this. If we start to understand how material culture comes about in our primate cousins and how ecology, so the environment, sociality and cognition influences their material culture, we may begin to make predictions as to how these three factor sets influenced material culture and to use in our hominin ancestors. So what's next now for your research? The next step would be to take this model and to apply them to all the non-human great ape species, so being chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans and gorillas. Because these different factor sets may have different influences in, in those different great apes. And I'm interested in the great ape uh, di species differences. For example, um, orangutans are very solitary or almost solitary at times. So sociality may be a very important limiting factor for their material culture development. Whereas in chimpanzees as well as bonobos, a very social species, the cognitive opportunities or predispositions for tool use may be very important. So this is the next uh, step I'd like to address to um, partition the variance we see in material culture into those three factor sets and apply that knowledge to uh, explaining potential um, tool use and material culture in our uh, human evolutionary past.